So while the XC20 has a very beautiful design, which is unique in its own way, you can clearly tell that both generations look exactly different. In the beginning, there was Lexus, and they decided that of their sedan lineup, they wanted to give us small, compact sedans for people who this would suit, and hence they began the IS series. So first off, they launched the XE10 series, which ran all the way to 2005, before they began the XC20 series, which ran all the way from 2006 to 2013, and then they continued it with this, the XE30 series, which is an absolute beauty, and this runs from 2014 all the way to 2020. So this video today, I'm going to be explaining to you the differences between the XE20 IS250 and the XE30 IS250. So before we go on ahead, please do well to subscribe to the channel, tap on the bell icon below to turn on post notifications, and sit back because you will enjoy this very one. to begin with this XC20 generation so this like I said ran all the way from 2006 to 2013 but that was a facelift version from 2009 or 10 2010 so of course right here you do have Xenon headlights with two blinkers right here but in the facelifted version of course you have daylight running lamps replacing these two blinkers which also is different in the bumper so in that bumper, you do have different fog lamps, which I reiterated in the video of the IS250 versus the IS350 because that was of the facelift era. So to watch that video, simply tap on the pop-up banner above or you wait till the end of the video because I'll be including the link to that video in the description below. Anyway, so as I was saying, the front fascia of this car is entirely different. Of course, you have a grille and of course you have the front bumper being different. But if we go behind the car though, what is missing is Lexus's L finesse design. Nonetheless, you still have the pre-facelift era tail light right here and two exhaust tips beautifully because of what we have beneath the hood, which I'll be telling you they did. So for the XC30, of course, we get a very different look, which is it's, it's amazing. It is very beautiful. So of course, this time we have a fuller grille with a very different shape, which is just, it looks like a fish's fin. Whee! Yeah, the tail fin right then of course you have your fog lamps which are embedded in the bumper just like in the facelift version it's similar to that one then you do have very different headlamps right here so you have very beautifully but detached they are led daylight running lamps which actually steal a lot of this attention because when coming in stealth mode at night this car gives you some sort of presence you know something is coming at you moving on to the side of the car of course you have a very different side mirror and then you notice that they gave this car more curves. I'm glad I got this car in this color because you can see every single difference that was made. And then if you move to the rear, which is where, this is where the bliss is at. You get your L finesse in the tail light right here. So this car is all modern, all everything. And it is just, it steals the spotlight basically. So it makes you feel as though the previous generation is just child's play. <laughs> So the interior of the XC20 generation, which is the older generation of the IS250, was pretty straight to the point, if I may put it that way. So of course, this guy actually did change his own, so it doesn't come as standard as it would come normally. So of course, he added black and red accents, or yeah, black and red accents to the interior right here. Then of course, you have your steering wheel with paddle shifters, and this entire middle area, he totally worked on because this, comes with an Android screen which does not come with this car as standard. So as a pop-up, I'm actually going to be putting to you what the pre what the facelifted version of this IS250 looks like on the inside. So you can clearly tell the difference right now. So when it comes to the rear sitting area of this cabin, moving in is a bit of a struggle because like I said it's a very compact sedan. It's a compact sedan and so this you have little to no leg room. Going on long, long trips in this car would be tiring, if I may put it that way. And of course, the headroom is pretty low. 
despite the fact that we do have a moon roof which is right there in front so the slopey roofline of this car does give you that uh, mark of headroom but of course when you see me inside a car of this caliber you just think ah already sneezing a car that is so lit and this is not left out when it comes to the exterior the interior of this car is totally different and it gives you cabin crew vibes so to begin with for this clip i'd like to apologize we lost the mic connection again but i welcomed you on board and i proceeded of course to introduce you to what the cabin of the xe30 is250 is like i hit that clearly right there that the interior design especially the dash area is very 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 driver and passenger centered of course you have a push to push to start control button right there that anchors you to the Lexus on form system which is inbuilt into the 7 inch infotainment screen right there and of course you have buttons for different controls and just like I said this is like the cockpit of a jet or an air aircraft so of course you have your gear lever you have your driving modes then of course you have storage compartments with USB ports right in there and a 12 volt socket then you have two cup holders right there then when it comes to the seating area of course you do have in cream and in leather perforated seats that are heated but not ventilated i also included the fact that the design is very unique and very central then i asked that we go to the rear seat to see what it's like so of course in the rear seating area of the xc30 is250 you do have more headroom because in as much as this car has a sloping roof line it's not as sloppy as it is in the xc30 generation you also do have longer or more legroom because this car has a longer wheelbase so when it comes to power these two cars are powered by the same engine lexus's 4gr fsc which is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated v6 engine and they are both mated to a six-speed automatic transmission system this is 250 puts out 208 horsepower 252 newton meters of torque while this is 250 puts out 204 horsepower for 251 newton meters of torque now of course this car sprints from 0 to 100 in very similar time ranges this does it in 8.3 seconds while this does it in 8.1 seconds when it comes to fuel economy though both of them are very similar but this is less fuel economical so guys before we go on ahead with the video please do not forget to hit subscribe if you haven't tap on the bell icon below to turn on for notifications and you must note that the stopping power of this car and this car are the same because they do have ventilated discs in front and in the rear and they, all, they both have two brake pistons in the front and ones in the rear. So potato potato, I guess, for the both of them. Now, when it comes to the features of this car, they all do have the same features, but this comes with optional Mark Levinson speakers. Now, the actual differences between the two, apart from having a, an entirely different look and all of that stuff, this car has more space because it has a longer wheelbase. The cabin is way bigger and the trunk is larger by 0.8 cubic feet which is actually good so this is bigger than this so if you are somebody who wants a compact sedan but you want more space out of your car and you're looking to buy an is this is actually the better generation for you to buy than this one this also does drive way better than this while one. i've given you all of these there are also still a few things about the cars that i do not like yes it's a compact sedan but it doesn't that mean that everything should be so compact there's no space in it and then yes the wheelbase is longer but only by 2.7 inches so you probably will be wondering what use that is for the cabin does have a bit of space so that is fair 0.8 cubic feet in the trunk is not very practical but then again this car wasn't built to be very practical was it then old generation versus new generation the new generation while being very beautiful has less durable exterior parts than the older generation and so when this age to be like this this will definitely not look like this and that might be a problem for you if you're thinking to buy any of these cars so tell me in the comment section now having told you what you get when you get this and what you get when you get this which of these cars would you prefer just like i said if you want to know more about this car please do well to watch the video whose link i will put it in the description below or click on the pop-up banner right there and you will get the full gist on the xc20 so guys this is where we part ways thank you so much for watching this video if you do like what you've seen please do want to give me a thumbs up still do not forget to subscribe like this video share with everybody who cares to watch ride with me's videos and everybody who needs to know this because these two are one of the common cars, the most common cars you drive 
or you see on the roads within this region. So guys, here's to say, see you next time. Thank you.